Hello, all you wonderful people. This is Ben Schwellen, and many of you have said, what is your language learning technique? Today, I'm going to share with you what I consider the second best language learning technique in the world. Because let's face it, the best, there's no replacement for it. You have to go live somewhere where no one will speak your language and they will only speak your target language. So for instance, if you want to learn Welsh, find people who will refuse to speak English to you. That's the best way. And frankly, if there's any Welsh speakers watching, the reason a lot of people don't learn Welsh is because you are so easily willing to speak English to people. Or if you go to the French Foreign Legion, they punish you for speaking anything but French from day one, even when you don't know any French. And many people join the French Foreign Legion simply to be able to learn French because it is proven that it is the best method anybody has ever come up with for learning a language. No other language except your target language allowed. So just live in the country that you want to go to. But of course, you can't always just travel to Croatia and live in the beautiful land that is the city of Zagreb, according to rumor. So what do you do if you can't live there? I came up with, through a lot of trial and error, a method of my own, a technique, which I call the Swiss technique. Which I will explain to you in a moment. But what you need for this is three simple things. All you need is a laptop or a computer or maybe a, an iPad or something. You know how to use a laptop? This is a pretty old one and I've got the PC over there. So you need to be computer literate because there's a website or an app that you need which is the most basic one that I've ever found and basic is best. You need one book, just one to start out with so you can get how the technique works to begin with in your target language and not bilingual. That's the key. So you can't just look at the other page and start reading in your language and you need one of these. What is this? I'll explain in a minute. It's a book holder and I'll go into more detail later on. But why do I call it the Swiss technique? I want to tell you that first because it's part of what led me to creating it in the first place. When I was studying languages at university, I came across a man from Switzerland. So I came across a guy at uni who spoke a Swiss guy. Obviously German was his first language and he knew French and English. We were studying in England together. And he spoke Azerbaijani, Armenian, Japanese, Chinese. Yeah, I use the Taiwanese flag because I believe in liberty, freedom, justice, and commerce. Free China! And I think he spoke bits of Malay and Hindi. I'm not sure, but he was studying Eastern languages and stuff. And this was his technique. And I didn't realize at the time, but it deeply influenced for me how I learned languages. Because he would just set up a book, have a translation go, and type as he was reading. And it was so efficient and fast. And it enabled him to have a set system and a program without fussing about with trying to figure out how he was going to learn a language. He had it down pat. Um, and I've taken that system and perfected it, tweaked it a bit. And I want to show you how it works. It's really, really simple. And he was a nice guy. And it stuck with me some of the things that he told me about how languages work, his own journeys on languages. And I would like to commemorate him and that moment in my life of that friendship by labeling this technique, the Swiss technique. Because it was the one that he used. It's how he absorbed languages so fast. And looking back at how I learned Welsh prior to that, it wasn't a method very similar. Though I hadn't crystallized it yet. I would look in a dictionary. This dictionary. I'll put a link down below. And I would read novels step by step, word for word, looking up each word, rather than going through lessons. I learned through doing in a language. And that's what this method I'm about to show you does. It's more of doing. It's stepping into the pool and swimming from day one, rather than going into a classroom and have someone say, this is how you swim. You're just being thrown into the pool and that's the best tactic, no matter what language you're learning. Now you're going to need three things as I said. 
the book stand, the cover viadir, the computer, a book in your target language. Ta da! And this book stand is the element which bridges these devices and makes it so easy to use. You just need to find one that is flexible and durable because you will smack it by using it so much. And you don't have to fuss with having to have it on a screen because I don't know if you're like me, but I don't really want to read a book from a computer. As you get better at this technique, as you're learning a language, you won't need to use the computer as much. It'll become more and more book based. Do it like that and you can read it and you go to Google Translate. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button. It really promotes growth in the algorithm and helps the channel. Also, please consider joining me on Patreon, which if I get enough of you, will enable me to do this full time and make content like several times a week for you, okay? And there's a super like button if you don't want to join on Patreon. Hey, let's get back to the video. If you want a book stand like this, I will put a link down there below for you so that you can pick one up. As well, I'll put a link down for Mabakuchur by Havkiwell and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, this is really handy, just the flexibility of it and it being compact. If you're going away for a while, you can fit something as slender as this into your rucksack. The key is that you get one that's durable and you could actually drop on the floor and it still won't break. Don't do that too much, just say. I know, Google Translate, but hear me out here. It's really, really more than meets the eye. If you're a beginner, you don't need to be 100% correct. You don't need to be 100% down on the grammar. And you're not gonna get perfection with Google Translate, but you are gonna get the gist of the sentences, which means if you're reading a book, you can go faster than normal. You just type every little bit you don't know. And as you go on, you accumulate words faster and faster and sentence structures to where you need this less and less. And it becomes something that you just tweak your understanding with now and then, knowing that it's an approximate. And language is approximate. You don't have to be perfect. That's the point. Once you reach the point where you know everything that's in just a typical book, you're going to be able to speak it. As soon as you're around people, you'll pick up the sounds and accents and cliches and nuances. So this is teaching you the structure, the basic bone structure. It's not teaching you eloquence. And if you're searching for eloquence, well, you're not gonna get that starting out. You're searching in the wrong place to learn a language. What makes this work is speed. You can just type as you read. And because you have this nice setup here, where it's convenient and you don't have to fiddle around with turning pages and looking up in a dictionary, and you have everything set up in a workstation, you go much faster than you would otherwise. And I can read chapters in languages that I don't even know in a matter of minutes without having to fiddle around with coursework or textbooks or large dictionaries. Though dictionaries are indispensable, please use them when you're learning a language. This is quicker. One strength that this is going to give you is basic patterns, how they work. Because when you're reading a text or like a story or anything, this is that, he was that, they were there, it is going. Now you're going to use the same sentence structures because there's about like a thousand common words in any language that once you know those, you can sort of work out what people are saying. And this is the fastest way you're gonna pick up a lot of those because most of those common words are gonna be used over and over again and you'll just pick them up. By doing it this way. And the other reason why this works is because of vocabulary. When you're learning a language, you need to have a vocabulary that's tailored to how you personally use language. And what this is going to do is you're going to remember specific things. The reason this works is because you're going to look up specific sentences which interests you. You'll skim over some that you don't know because you're like, well, I sort of get that. I don't need to go further. But you can use Google Translate and, you know, it drops down a menu here of different words that are related, especially if you just type in one word. So let's type in wealth. Yulet. 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 
And there's different words that pop down here that are related, cognates, synonyms. And you'll be able to learn the words that are related to the words which interest you, which is going to make you more tailored to the language so you get to learn at your own pace through vocabulary that interests you. Now there's more to Google Translate than I have just shown you here. You can learn any Latin-based language, I mean Latin-based in script, so the letters match up. There are 43 main writing systems in the world. Welsh and English and German and Turkish and Vietnamese share the fact that they use the Latin script. Russian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Kazakh share the fact that they use the Cyrillic script, Hebrew and Yiddish use the Hebrew script, but they're different languages. And a writing system is a completely separate form of just conceptualizing. So Japanese and the Japonic languages have their own script. Well, they have more than one, but that's another story. And Google Translate, what it does is it enables you to use different scripts. Most of those 43 scripts that are dominant around the world, you can use in Google Translate via the Latin script. So you can type out how it sort of sounds in English. Cherokee has its own script. But even if you have characters that don't exist in English, Polish or Icelandic, which have unique characters, it'll suggest, is this what you meant? And you can select that from a drop-down menu. But even for languages like Chinese, if you know how it sounds, you can type sort of how it sounds in English and it will suggest the Chinese characters. So that you can use this on a Latin based keyboard to learn a language this way. It is genuinely unique and you can do this with Japanese. Hey. Now, I'm getting no commission for Google Translate. I mean, if Google wants to pay me money for this, please. But the fact of the matter is, with the keyboard that you have below, you don't need to restrict yourself to Latin script-based languages. This is a really great book for learning Latin. Okay, really great. I mean, it's... And the whole process of this is, it doesn't have any English or French in it. It's just... It's entirely in Latin. It just teaches you by building sentence upon sentence. It has a dictionary, general vocabulary in the back, and it teaches you through immersion, even though, of course, Latin's dead. But that's the point of Google Translate. It's fully immersive, and you don't have to go through this rigmarole of studying a course, which is not going to plunge you into it. It's going to say, this is this and that is that, using your language as the text and not forcing you to slowly put yourself entirely in your target language, which is the point. Just set up a book stand. Here, I'll show you with the B-roll and just read a book with your hands free. The key is that your hands are free. You don't have to fiddle on with pages. It's more efficient. So that is my preferred method of learning languages, the Swiss technique, a book stand, and Google Translate. You need a book that you enjoy. You need a book that, like short stories are really good. The subject matter, you need to enjoy it. It would need to be something that you would read in your own language. And that's the key thing. You have to make it yours. And that's what I like about this Google Translate Swiss method so much. You choose the course of the river with the goal in mind. So that's how I learn languages. Hey, how do you learn languages? How did you find that method? Do you think you'll try it? Do you think that would work for your target language? What language would you like to learn? And do you think that would help you learn Welsh? Because I do a lot of that on this channel. Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna get out of here now.